It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For today's episode of Comparative Mythology, I'm going to compare and contrast the Anzu myth to the Aluma Elish. Although the earliest copy of the Aluma Elish can be dated back to 1200 BC, it seems as known that a lot of people have indicated that there's actually an older existing version of this myth that predates it. The Anzu myth predates both the Book of Genesis and the Aluma Elish. It can be dated back from 865 BCE. And here are some images right here that demonstrate what the Anzu bird looked like. There are two major versions of the Anzu myth. The first version is the older Babylonian edition, and the second edition is a later Babylonian edition. But the later Babylonian edition is heavily damaged in comparison to the older version of the same story. So, without further hesitation, let's compare and contrast the two stories. I sing of the superb song of the king of the populated lands, beloved of Mommy, the powerful god, Enlil's son. I praise superb Naruta, beloved of Mommy, the powerful god, Enlil's son, Ekar's child, leader of the Amanaki, focus of the Enlanu, who waters cattle's pens and graded gardens, ponds, and city and town. Flood waves of battle, who darken the sash warrior, the fiercest demons through tireless fear his attack. Listen to the praise of the powerful one's strength, who subdue, who bound a mountain of stone in his fury, who conquer soaring Anzu with his weapon, who spear the bull man inside of the sea, strong warrior who slay with his weapon, powerful one who is quick to form an attack away. Until now, no diocese have been created for the Ikigigi. The Ikigigi was a symbol for the Alel's power. Whoever's were formed, the Tigris, the Euphrates, but spring have not sent their water to their land. Clouds are still far away on the horizon. All the Ikigigi gather to Enlil their father, warrior of the gods. They, his son, brought a report. Pay attention to reliable words. Oh, he he, what a mountain of, and the lap of the Ankanaki. Blank has given birth to Anzu. His beak is a saw, which, blank, eleven coats of mail, question mark, the mountains, at his shout, the south wind, the powerful, the mass, whirlwinds, they met, and the four winds. Father of the gods, the ranky god, looked at him, but kept his thoughts to himself. He studied Anzu closely. He considered with, who gave birth to, why is this, all answer his heart searching. The far side of one addressed his words to Eli, surely water of this babe begot Anzu, holy water of the gods of Apsu, brought earth conceive him, and he was born from mountain rocks. Ye have look at Anzu himself, let him serve you and never cease. And the hall let him bar the way in the innermost chamber forever. The word spoken to him. He, Elil, took a cult center and ministered the orders of all the gods. He made an extra fate and Anzu administrated it. Elil appointed him to the entrance of the chamber, which he preferred. He would bathe in holy water in his presence. His eyes would glaze at the trapping of Elil's power. His lowly crown, his role of divinity, the tablets of destinies in his hands. Anzu glazed and glazed at the Ranki's god, father of the gods, and fixed his purpose to observe the Elo's power. Anzu often glazed at the Ranki's god, father of the gods, and fixed his purpose to observe the Elo's power. I shall take the gods' tablet of destinies for myself and control the order for all the gods, and shall possess the stone and be the master of rights. I shall direct every one of the Ikigigi. He plotted opposition in his heart, and at the chamber's entrance from which he often glazed, he waited for the start of the day. While Elise was bathing in the holy water, stripped and his crown laid down on the throne, he grabbed the tablet of destinies for himself, took away the Elel's power, rights were abandoned, Anzu flew off and went into hiding. Now let's go to Tablet 2 of the Aluma Elish. Tiamat assembled his creatures and collected battle units against the god his offspring, 
Tiamat did not even more evil prosperity than Apsu. It is reported to Ah that she has prepared for war. Ah listened to that report and was dumbfounded and sat in silence. When he had pondered and his fury subsided, he made his way to Ashar, his father, came before Ansar, the father who begot him, and began to repeat to him everything that Tiamat had planned. Father, Tiamat who bore us is rejecting us. She has convinced an assembly and raging out of control. The gods have turned to her, all of them, even those you forgot have gone over to her side, have crowned around and relic beside Tiamat. Fear, scrambling restlessly night and day, working up to war, growling and raging, they have convinced a council and created conflict. Mother Erber, who fashioned all stings, contributed an unfaceable weapon. She born giant snakes. Sharp of tooth and unsparing of fang, she filled her bellies with venom instead of blood. She choked ferocious dragons with fearsome rays. Their bodies shall wear up continuously and never turn away. She stationed a horned serpent, a Mishushu dragon, a Lamu hero, a Nagalu demon, a rabbit dog, and a scorpion man. Aggressive Amu demons, a fish man, and a bull man. Bearing merciless weapons, fearless in battles, her orders were so powerful that they could not be disobeyed. Addition, she created eleven more likewise. Over the gods, her offspring had convinced a council for her. She promoted Quan Ju, made him great among them, conferred upon him leadership of the army, command of the assembly, raising the weapon to signal engagement to rise up for combat, overall comment of the whole war force. And she led upon a throne, I have cast a spell for you, and made you the greatest in the gods' assembly. I have put into your power rule over all the gods, you shall be the greatest, for you are my only lover. Your command shall always prevail over the Enkanaki. She gave him the tablets of destinies and made him clap it to his breast. As you guys can see, the themes are pretty similar when it comes down to the ideas of conflict, largely because in both stories it seems as though that the main characters both had the tablets of destiny. But this is not the first time that the Anzu bird makes an appearance in mythology. There's a story that is known as Anana and the Upalupa tree. Anana is basically the goddess of fertility. She is also known as Ishtar. She is also known as Ashura. And so basically there's a connection between these stories as well as those that are being told within the Bible. In the first days, in the very first days, in the first nights, in the very first nights, in the first years, in the very first years. In the first days when everything needed was brought into being, in the first day when everything needed was properly nurtured, when bread was break in the swines of the land, and when bread was tasted in the homes of the land, when heaven had moved away from earth, and earth had separated from heaven, and the name of man was fixed, when the sky god, An, has carried over the heavens, and the air god, Enlil, has carried over the heavens, when the queen of the great below, Arishigal, was given the underworld for her domain. At that time, it was planted a tree, a single tree, by the banks of the great river Anki. The father did plant the Hoopalooper tree. The god of wisdom, he planted it by the banks of the Euphrates before he set sail, before the father departed for the underworld. The tree was nurtured by the waters of the Euphrates, the very waters that carry Anki to the sea. Small windstones were tossed against him. Large hailstones were held against him. Like ongoing turtles, they changed the nail of Anki's boats. The rolling world, okay. The whirling south wind arose, blew away the tree, pulling at the roots and ripping at its branches until the waters of the Euphrates carried it away. A young woman who walked in the fear of no man and would not be owned plucked the tree from the river and spoke, I shall bring this tree to Yenipek. I shall plant this tree in my holy garden. Anana cared for the tree with her hand. She settled the earth around the tree with her foot. She wondered. How long will it be until I have a shining stone to sit upon? How long would it be until I have a luxurious bed to lie upon? The years pass. Five years, then ten years. The tree grew thick, but its bark did not split. 
Then a serpent, who cannot be charmed, made its nest in the roots of the hoopalupa tree. The Anzu bird set its young in the branch of the tree, and the dark May Lilla built her home in the trunk. To recap everything, the Anzu myth directly aspired the Aluma Elish. The Aluma Elish will later aspire the Book of Genesis. The Anzu bird makes an appearance in Gilgamesh, and Gilgamesh itself would also aspire the Book of Genesis. But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll talk to you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.